Do you feel that pulling all of the troops out of Iraq was a good idea in light of what's happening now with ISIS? And do you believe that the U.S. should employ ground troops to battle ISIS? Well, I believe that our hurry to get all of our troops out of Iraq would just essentially create a power vacuum in the region. You know, we didn't s set up a stable government before we left. So now people are just desperate for security. And unfortunately, ISIS, for many, is the only way to go because the way ISIS works is you join them or you die. And I think the U.S., being one of the strongest nations in the world, has a moral obligation to defend the human rights of the people in that region. Going off what uh, Kennedy Young said, I do believe that America does have a responsibility to protect its interests around the world, being a democracy and human rights. But also, I don't think that it's our responsibility to establish a government in another place. Because in the past, it's shown that if we try to do that, things fall apart. Think of Vietnam as we try to establish democracy in a place that's not ready for it. We, what we could do is establish parameters around which we, we could have created parameters around the government of Iraq in order to support it, but not actively have a hand in it. Well, we jumped into Iraq with too soon and with no, not a well-developed plan. And now, because of that, the government is fractured and there's basically no government at all there. And ISIS just came in because of that. So we should, we should, we shouldn't get our bombs ourselves involved as uh, as much as Harrison wants us to. But we should encourage uh, the Kurds or and other in the international community to uh, provide assistance. But it's not. We should focus our efforts towards our own country and our own problems. So what you're saying is pass responsibility to other nations. Yes. Yeah, and I kind of agree with Michael. I think we should help the people help themselves. We can't just hold their hands the whole time. We need to give them the resources they need to establish the government the people want. Okay, but if our interests are threatened, say, if ISIS threatens Israel, our very close ally, we are going to be forced to step in. Yeah, definitely. But we shouldn't have a team in our alliances to begin with. Why do you think so? Because it's not our focus to help others. It's our focus to help us. And the government should not be involved in other pe other countries and their government and their their policy. So we should just leave our allies out to dry. We should help, we should focus our efforts on us and we should <laughs> help them, but not we should not send ground forces or or uh, anything like okay. that. Any military. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is to all the candidates. Many Americans take advantage of programs such as Medicaid and welfare. How will you prevent taxpayers' money from being taken advantage of? Yes, yes, I'll take that. Um, well, the old saying, you know, give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man a fish, he'll be able to feed himself for life. I believe in that, but I also understand that many Americans are having tough, tough times right now. We need to be able to offer people help when they need it but not so much that it becomes a crutch for them. And I think the best way to help that is to invest in job opportunities. You know, get these people out of unemployment, get them working in the workforce, get back to their communities. I think that's the best way to handle the situation, get people off the crutch and be able to take care of themselves. That's very interesting, but also, we're trying to talk about taxes right now. How do we avoid, create, how do we create these job opportunities without taxing the Americans out of their money? I say, provide charitable opportunities, have those who can give to be able to give, not because they have to, because they want to, because they have the ability. I think that those who are better off would be more likely to give if it wasn't forced on them as part of human nature. And as he said, I think that's a very good idea, to create job opportunities instead of having welfare to exist. But I think welfare should continue to exist in perhaps a slightly scaled back way because not every op not every situation is exactly the same, because some people actually are working towards getting that job and uh, being able to support families. Because once I don't personally think that one mistake twenty years ago should affect should affect your life for the rest. Of it. I agree with Tommy to a certain extent. We should encourage uh, encourage nonprofit organizations and business businesses to uh, help the poor and the underprivileged and give them job opportunities to get them back on their feet and help them along. But they should be able, 
to support themselves and provide back to the community in some way. Um, okay. Karen Jenkins, every day on the news there are reports of shootings. <coughs> Do you think that every American should be allowed to own guns? If so, th should they be allowed to own or carry fully automatic guns whose purpose is most likely not for hunting? I personally believe in the Second Amendment that, human, that Americans have the right to bear arms or protect themselves. But I don't believe that that should, be, that should imply that Americans should be sold guns without any form of background check, any form of exam or anything. I believe that the that ownership of a gun, you have the right to own a gun. It's almost like the right, like the legal right to marry. People have that opportunity, but they also have to go through background checks and work in order to, to be able to understand, to be able to be considered, I suppose, worthy. But I think the same should, thing should go with uh, firearms. Because firearms, every day are used to hurt a fellow Americans, innocent people. And I believe that if we're able to establish uh, certain exams and background checks in order to prove that certain people are mentally sound and have the, the capability to use these guns in a responsible way, say in gun ranges or on hunting, on hunting grounds, that they should be able to use them. I don't think that right should be taken away from Americans, but I believe that those Americans who are capable of using them in a responsible manner should be able to exercise that right. I mean, I agree with Tommy. Every American has that right. That's part of the Constitution. You're not going to stop violence just by taking away guns. I mean, pulling some news articles, 20 stabbed in Pittsburgh, the Independent. Man stabs 22 school children in China, New York Times. Violence is going to happen regardless, and the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. I agree with Harrison to a certain extent. Guns are not the reason for this violence in our country. It's the society in general that is the problem. We should focus our efforts in educating our children and society to prevent these crimes and provide law enforcement with a way to have better timing and better, uh, better control, not control, but better, uh, better, better ways to prevent these crimes. Not, not restricting our rights to bear arms, but and because if we don't have any way to protect ourselves, then we're just giving the criminals uh, easier, easier time. Uh, easier, easier times affecting. Uh, 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 affecting. Uh, yeah. Going off, of, going off uh, Harrison's little cliche there, that the only way to stop a bad man with a gun is with a good man with a gun, mm -hmm. we could possibly keep those bad men from getting guns in the first place. I mean, with background <coughs> checks and, med and psychiatric evaluations, we can prevent these people, these criminals, from getting their hands on guns in the first place, which, which negates the need for guns in the hands of a good guy. Oh yeah, definitely. Run background checks, but you know what? Drugs are illegal too, but people still get their hands on that. But I totally agree with you that when you run background checks, it shouldn't be able, guns shouldn't be available to any average Joe who walks into a gun shop. Um, okay, so this is to everybody. As far as improving our nation's education system, where do you think we should focus our attention to and why? I believe that in the future, like, that we could begin something called the specialization of education. It's pretty obvious that not everybody learns the same way. Some people are more tactile. Some people have this ability to connect with other people. Some people have an ability to connect with numbers or words and literature. And as Einstein said, if you, t if you grade a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it'll spend its entire life believing that it's stupid. If we can establish a system of education in which children are fostered in the, in the ways of learning and in the areas that they are most passionate about and they understand the most created by nature, that we'll have a produ more productive society in the future. Creating curriculums <coughs> that cater to, a to cater to a specific student's strengths and weaknesses, <laughs> enabling them to excel in the future. I personally believe that jo uh, nature specializes each human to a specific occupation in the future. And if we can foster the, ex the expansion of that child's knowledge and ability in a certain area that they <coughs> already have a natural edge in, I believe that will have a more productive job uh, world in the future. No, Tom makes a great point. Everyone <laughs> learns different, but that 
specialization of education starts with the teachers. Now, a stance I've taken very strongly on is um, re reform of teacher unions. Now, there, there's a very clear gap between <laughs> the graduation rates in urban cities and in suburban, suburban schools, 20% in some cities. Now, that's ridiculous, but just throwing some numbers out here, to fire a teacher who is union and has a tenure post, that can take two to five years. You know, we got more than 20 steps you gotta do, and that's just ridiculous. That, it just makes, it's easier to keep a bad teacher in than it is to bring good teachers in. So it's very important that we reform it to, also, to protect the rights and benefits of teachers, to make it attractive to professionals, but also make it restrictive enough to where we keep that quality high. I understand what you're saying at the beginning, that students oftentimes in urban cities have a, or in any, in general, have oftentimes a higher rate of dropping out. But that's probably because students feel that they can't do the work, because they're, the emphasis is placed on things in their curriculum that they just don't understand. Like some child may be able to quote Shakespeare off the top of their head, but can't solve a math, can't solve a long division problem. If so much emphasis is told on, is put on that math, that that long division problem, they'll begin thinking that they're not worth it. They're not they're not the kind of person who clicks with education, and they'll likely drop out and not be able to give a far more uh, substantial contribution to our society in the future. Yeah, I mean, you got to specialize education. I'm not trying to disagree with you on that. It's just the means to do that is what I'm trying to emphasize. Well, the big problem is college students, when they get out of college, they're burdened with a huge amount of debt. So, when I, so what I plan to do is give out monetary grants to colleges to, uh, <coughs> to encourage them to give low, uh, low tuition to uh, students that are coming into college. And also to uh, to give out uh, give out loans, not loans. Give out give out give out loans to students with low interest, giving them low interest rates, so that they be able to pay back easily uh, the money that they were given. Where are you going to get the money from? Well, I'll get the money from. Well, first off, we're already in the deficit. Where are you going to get the money from? I would lower the military budget and use that money to help education. I, I think I have an almost better solution for that. Your solution is good, but I think I have a little better. But by writing, having students be able to take loans from the government, but also have them have have that money be paid back as time goes, as time goes on, as they're in college. Say, um, say, um, they pay back for every grade, certain grade they get. Say if they have an A, a certain amount of, of money is taken off of their student debt and say if a, if a student gets all the way through their college <coughs> career, which is highly unlikely, with an A in every single class, they will have a very small amount of debt. It'll, it'll provide a, an incentive for students to do well in school, which will provide them with greater opportunity in the job market, and also provide them with an easier opportunity to pay back their student loans so that doesn't hang over their lives, so hang over them for the rest of their lives. Tom makes a great point, that incentive to do well in school rather than just take money and slack off its good idea. The whole C's get degrees mentality and then you have like the people who work hard and get their A's and who want to go off and do great things the exact same amount of money than those who have the C's get degrees mentality. Yeah, teachers work at it. Yeah, and that's, I don't, that wouldn't be really fair. That'd be probably discouraging to people who want to do more and possibly discouraging people who want to do less because they say, oh, like I have the exact same, I have to just slack off to whatever I want in college and I have the same amount of money I have to pay back from the person who wants to work hard. Okay, let's go. This is Stahl Cambridge. Should the government require businesses to pay equal wages to men and women based on the scale of their job? Yes, I don't think that should be a, even a question up for debate. I believe that people, regardless of their gender or ethnicity or religion or anything, should be paid the exact same, they have the exact same credentials, they have the exact same occupations, because the same amount of work is being done by, by the person, regardless of their male or female, and I believe that paying someone any less over something that they cannot help is unfair in this apparently progressive country that we live in. Tom makes a great point that you can't control what race you are, what gender you are, but what you can't control is how hard you work. And that's what's really important to me. I completely agree with both of them. It's just simply not right for unequal pay for men and women. Men, women should get the same amount of pay for the same amount of work that men do. And it's just not right.
Okay, so how would you focus American businesses so that they <coughs> will, in the long run, create more jobs than us? Just all of us. I'll take that. Well, so I can repeat the question? Yeah. How would you focus American businesses so that they will, in the long run, create more jobs than us? Well, part of that is just making domestic business more attractive. You know, if you have all these unions in the U.S. and all these guys, all these workers want outrageous benefits and pay, but it is, it is important that you still protect their rights, but scale it back because what's more attractive to a businessman? Starting his business in the U.S. where he has to pay all these unions, all these fees, for all these benefits, or just start it overseas where he doesn't have to do any of that. It's simple e economics. Also, I believe providing incentives to uh, to businesses for keeping their keeping their companies within the U.S. borders to provide those jobs in factories, in public relations, and all of those. Providing like monetary benefits to these com companies will allow more jobs to stay within the country instead of outsourcing the other two. I agree with Tommy. If we give incentives to businesses and organizations, they will it will encourage them to provide more jobs for the American public and not start outsourcing. Do tax incentives too. You know, if someone starts a big business, you don't want to start taxing them like crazy. That's almost punishing them for being successful. They're the ones providing jobs to the lower classes. And the higher tax rates will likely cause a business to send their country their their biz their business and their factories to a com to a country where taxes are lower, say Mexico or China.